Good afternoon and welcome everybody to this edition of the Big East Rewind. I'm Chuck Everson from Villanova University and I'm your host and my co-host, as always, a man that lights up a room just by walking into it, Sonny Sparrow, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. How are you, Sonny? Good. Very, very smooth, Chuck. Very nice intro. Very good. Very good. You should do this more often. Better. <laughs> only, only took me 95 times, Sonny. 95 <laughs> shows. <laughs> It's only been 95 introductions. You think by now you knew what I was doing, you know? So today we got we got the orange men are in the house, Sonny. The orange are in the house today. And uh, That's right. we have a – yeah, well, listen, <laughs> and we're moving up in time. We're getting out of the 80s. We're shaking off the 80s, and we're into the 2000s now, son. Can you believe it? Yeah, so 2000 really into 2010s. 2010s. Wow, it's almost. Know, like what do they the call it? What do they call that decade? Is that the tens? Is that what they call it? Yeah, I think so. The tens for short. Yeah, that's what we do. Okay. So, without any further ado, I will, uh, I will introduce our guest, and you know, we'll have some fun. We've this is the first time I think we've had uh, relatives both be guests on the same show, Sonny. We I had, know. We had uh, this guy's uncle. And and now we have Brandon, his uh, his nephew. We had Howard Trish, his uncle, and now we have Mister New York. Ba- he was Mister New York basketball in high school. He was Syracuse mm-hmm. Orangeman from 2009 to 2013, and he started every single game. Unlike you and I, Sonny, he started every single game that he played at Syracuse. Yeah. And he is the winningest Orangeman in the history of the school, which. That's a pretty dubious distinction because you guys have had a lot, a lot of great teams. So he was a part of at least four of them, you know, for uh, for that period of time. Syracuse legend, Brandon Trish. How are you, Brandon? I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be here, you know, speaking with you guys. Um, yeah, man, I'm just having a, a nice little Monday. So, you know, I'm just happy to talk to you guys. Yeah, we're, we're glad you're here, too. Because And we had, like we were talking earlier before we started the show, we had your uncle on. Uh, earlier in this uh, in this adventure that we Sonny and I have been on uh, for the last two and a half years, and we had I mean I it was wild because we were talking about it and we had him on with Keith Smart and and if, for those that don't know that was the matchup at the end of the game when Keith hit that you know, miracle shot to uh, to put Syracuse out but it was a great it was great to hear them discuss that because that had never been done before and. Uh, there was a lot of questions that I think your uncle wanted to find out, and uh, he, he got the answers. At least he got to ask the questions, right, Sonny? Yep. So, so but Brandon that's not started. what we're here to talk about today, man. We're here to talk about Brandon and your career. And, you know, so now let me ask you the first thing I want to – you're a Syracuse guy from, from high school. You're from the area, right? Yeah, um, born and raised in Syracuse. Um, when I was like nine, ten-ish. We moved to like the suburbs a little bit to do yeah. it, and that's when I started going to Janesville to do it. Um, but my older, my oldest brother is more of a you know city of Syracuse, like Nottingham yeah. area. So, um, but yeah, I went to um, Janesville to do it, which is like the east side of Syracuse, if you will. So, does that put any more pressure on you being a local Syracuse kid, and now you're playing at the university? Um, so that was the thing. Um, so growing up. Um, I went to, you know, some of the basketball camps. My um, my, my dad actually did a lot of uh, poultry work um, for Bernie Fine. Okay. So they had built a relationship, and that's why I was able to go to the basketball camps, even at a young age, earlier than I, – I believe, like, the camp was maybe, I want to say, nine and up or something yeah. like that, and I was, like, seven. Yeah. And I was able to go to the camp. That's great. Um, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. So – they obviously knew who I was through my uncle and because I was always playing, I was going to the camps and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't necessarily grow up like a Syracuse fan per se. Um, you know, when you have watching on TV and it's always Duke and North Carolina on yep. TV is naturally you're going to become a fan of those guys. So I remember just watching as far as like, you know, Jerry Stackhouse, um, you know, Vince Carter, I'm talking about when I'm like five and six years old, like knowing those colors and then speed up, you know, watching like Shane Battier and those guys 
you know, so I was a fan of those two teams. And then right before I came up, right before I came a fan of Syracuse, which is basically eighth grade, ninth grade, I was a fan of UConn. So Ben Gordon and those guys. Wow, you can't, you're, you're going you're gonna to talk about that publicly? You're going to put that out there right now publicly? <laughs> right. Yeah, man. You know what it was? Right when they started recruiting me and I started getting free tickets, I was like, I like it up here. <laughs> <laughs> I, started, I think it was like, nine, I was like my ninth grade year. Yeah, I started getting free tickets. I think I used to get like two tickets to the game. So I was watching. So that's watch. I'm watching G Mac go crazy. Um, this is like um, 05 ish yep. area. Yeah, around that time. Yep. Um, so I watched him go crazy um, during the like you know Big East tournament and things like that. So that's when I became, you know, watching SU a little bit more. But like when you're from like a smaller city like Syracuse, of course you wanted to get the approval from you know the the nation. You want to see how far do people know you. Um, you know, so even though I knew Syracuse was you know a team that I kind of I looked at, I was like, can I get recruited by? UCLA, can I get you know? Yeah. Can I get recruited by Arizona? Right, right, and things like that. Even if, even if they had no chance, I just wanted to say it, you know. Um, but again, um, there was I was more so thinking, can I be the best player from Syracuse to play at Syracuse? Right. That was like my 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 thought process of choosing Syracuse, and it just so happened that um, my senior year, you know, I'm watching Johnny Flynn who were. Who, to this day, is one of my favorite player, players of all time. I'm watching him, like, go crazy. And, and like, um, I'm not really sure if he's going to go pro. So, because this is freshman year, I'm a junior. Now my senior year is his sophomore year, and I see him, like, you know, going on NBA draft boards, and I'm like, all right, you know, is it possible for me to even play? You know? Yeah. So it just worked out that in the midst of him doing really well, um, I already committed to Syracuse. And, you know, Beheim was – he was true with what he said. He said, I'm going to have a great chance of starting and that me and Scoop Jardine was going to, like, split minutes. Um, I didn't know I was going to start, per se, because it's not like I was, like, technically out playing Scoop every day. Um, but, you know, he kind of kept his word that it was going to be a fair chance. Yeah. and I'd say so. You started every game. You can't get much better than that, you know. And you're, and you're, Let me but back you're back such a different – so when you, Go ahead. So who else was in the mix with you? Uh, what did it come down to? Syracuse and who else in your in your recruitment? <laughs> uh, Syracuse, Georgetown, and UConn. Oh, so all Georgetown. Biggies, so you knew you wanted to play. Oh, let's, the let's stop the show right there. Let's just stop the show. All the rivals. All the rivals. All oh. the rivalry. Uh, all the rivalry. Oh. I'm calling. I'm going to text Howard right now. I'm talking. I mean, I, like I. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I ever seen myself really like leaving. Like it was like Syracuse was like. It, can any other team knock? I didn't go on. The, I didn't go on any recruiting trips. Oh really? You know? Not yeah, even to Georgetown go, had, or, had, or UConn. I had, a, I had a few planned, so I had scheduled those two. Um, then I also had like a Georgia Tech and Miami. Where if if I was going five trips, it was going to be those. I did the visit with um, Bayheim, and then I was like, "Yeah, Dad, I'm, I'm going. I'm going here." <laughs> it was like that. It was one of those. So how how far from those. campus did your folks live? We live um, five, five to seven minutes, maybe oh, really? five minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, that, so you had the best so, of both worlds. You can go home and get a home cooked meal anytime you want. Do your laundry, whatever you had to do, right? Exactly, that and that was one of the. the um, Good things because it's like the home away from home. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes I think about that because I'm like, for me, sometimes uh, sometimes my issue is uh, getting out of my comfort zone. So being in Syracuse, I was more comfortable. So I didn't – sometimes I would, you know, fall back on it, which is a good yeah. thing. You, like you're around your family and things like that. But sometimes you need to, you know, you need your space. go explore. Yeah. And be, now, exactly. your parents didn't pull off like any pop-ins. Like did they just show up at the dorm and say, hey, we're, you know – Nothing. Oh, no. okay. Well, that's my good parents, then. You got the best of both worlds then. Yeah, my dad. My dad liked to say he he was following me all all over the place. He liked to say that, but <laughs> <laughs> I know. I knew your teachers. I knew I knew the police officer. I'm like, all right, yeah, whatever. yeah. I got I got to ask you a question. 
because you came in and your physical, your, your physique was very well developed. And I know Howard told me you, 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 you just love working out basketball, but also, you know, off in the weight room and those kind of things. When did you get into that and how did that start for you? Because, I mean, you, you, fit, you were a man as a teenager. So how, how did that start? So I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm the youngest of three boys. Uh, my middle brother just so happened to be 5'8", <laughs> but my oldest brother is 6'4", is as well. Um, he was one of those guys who was like, he was a little thicker, then he get, he transitioned to like slimming his body down and getting in really good shape. So my brother would run 10 miles, like all across Syracuse. And at the time, he's, let's say if he's a senior in high school at Nottingham, in 02 or something like that, then I'm like 11 years old. So when he's 18, he's seven years older. So it wasn't like I could run 10 miles. But I, I knew what that was, what the hard work was. And this is like around the time when strength strength shoes was like popular, mm -hmm. trying to jump higher. Yep. So I knew I seen him always trying to figure out a way to become more athletic and work out. Um, so I was I was a bigger kid, like taller kid growing up. And then when I moved from the city into the suburbs, I actually it you know, the lifestyle was a lot slower. So I ended up gaining <laughs> gaining a lot of weight. Because, you know, where I live, there's like a bunch of fast food restaurants. So I'm going there more often. Um, but basically, um, I hit a growth spurt from, I think, seventh grade to eighth grade. I went from 5'7". Um, let's say September, seventh grade, I went from 5'7". And now that next summer in July, I'm six foot going to eighth grade. And I was one of those guys who always jumped, you know. So we, we always had the Fisher Price rims. We always had the rim in the backyard with the low rim. So I always was jumping, jumping, jumping. It just so happened that once I, uh, you know, hit my growth spurt, I went from being a little chubby to being, you know, really skinny. <laughs> and around that time, I actually started with strength and motion. Um, so I already was doing a running outside, but I wasn't really, like, lifting weights and working on my body. But I started ninth grade, which was, I think, 14 years old with strength and motion, which is with Corey Parker. He worked a little bit with uh, uh, Syracuse as well. Um, so from but so now eighth grade, I'm six foot 170, you know, at 13 and then 14, I'm six to 180. Wow. So, yeah. So if you if you could think of one of those like those phenom kids who in ninth grade Duncan and yeah, I was one of those kids. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, no, I just knew that your, your physical appearance, your body was just so developed, so well developed. I mean, it's genetics. I mean, me and, me and my uncle Howard, we we're actually pretty much built the, built similar. Very similar. Um, my oldest brother, we we're all, you know, the ones for the most part, you know, on my dad's side of the family, dad is six six, my uncle six five, his brothers, his brothers six five as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm six three. My brother is six four so we all kind of you know, six three and up um so we all had like a natural type of build um that was going to happen anyways through genetics um but you know genetically i'm able to if i lift weights i'm able to see results really fast if i'm working hard you can see it on me if i'm not working hard you can also see it on me so it's kind of like that wow so do you went through the did you play in the aau circuit when you were coming up yeah, I played AAU. Um, I started off playing uh, locally, you know, like, you know, locally. And then um, um, I started out playing with Danielle Marshall with Mickey Walker. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, I was going to say, you played with Mickey. Yeah, when I was like, yeah. So I was like eighth grade playing 17 and under um, around that time. And then I, I played a little bit with Albany City Rocks. But for the most part, I was playing with uh, Mickey Walker. And then uh, so I played – AAU, um, eighth grade, going to ninth. Um, my ninth grade going to 10th, I played as well for my ACL in 10th grade. So I didn't play the 11th grade year I didn't play. And then my senior, my senior year I played. Yeah. So so the Albany, did you have to go down to Albany to practice and all that kind of stuff? Or was there a team nah, locally? No, they don't do it. They, um, they just, you know, roll, roll the ball, the ball out. out, right? You know what's crazy? You know who's on that team? Jim, Jimmer Fredette was on that team. Yeah, oh, Fredette. Yeah. So it was Jimmer Fredette. Yeah, Jim, oh, oh, wow. Jimmer Fredette. Yeah. yeah, so it was it was me, Jimmer Fredette, uh, Mark Lyons. 
from Xavier in Arizona. Wow. It was uh we had someone else oh Taylor Battle who played at Penn State as well. Um you know, and I'm the ninth grader and those guys are ten, uh two and three grades above me. Yeah. Um so it was, it was some pretty nice kids uh, around Albany at the time. That's a squad right there. Um Yeah. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, and it's always you always wind up running into those guys, you know, uh, as you you know the guys that you played with when you were a kid in the parks or in when we played it was at camps more so than the AAU, but you would always run into five star, five star and Eastern Invitational, and there was there was a series yeah. of camps that you went to because there was, so I went to that's those where well. anybody came to watch you play, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, definitely, I grew up going playing playing at Eastern Invitational. Um, I didn't. I played one year um, at uh, Five Star, which was incredible. That was man, all the top guys were there. Yeah, like like Big East. You're talking about Corey, Fisher, like Corey Fisher. You know, because it's Northeast. So you got Corey Fisher, Johnny Flynn. You got Mookie Jones. Uh, uh, the other Jones that went to uh, West Virginia, uh, Kevin Jones. Like it was so much, so much Big East, so many. Um, you got Duran Scott, because because what it, what was so crazy about that camp is you had your ninth grade group. There were that camp was so crazy that you had your ninth grade group that only played ninth grade. Tenth grade played with only tenth grade, and then they had eleven and twelve play in one group. Basically, like you know, like freshmen play with freshmen, yeah. sophomores is like getting, you know. And I'm already at sophomore playing varsity anyway, so I was like a little confused. But I was like, all right, whatever. You know, you playing with your age group. Yeah. And things like that. Mari Lawrence, so so many, so many Division One guys there. I can remember Kevin Prom. It was, it was so many guys. How about how about at home? Did you get? Did you guys go down to play pickup at the at Syracuse at all while you yeah. were? So you got to know you got to yeah, know we'll those go. guys before you even got in the gym, right? Before I mean, before you went to school there. Yeah. So my my years of playing with those guys were, like I said, uh, I was hurt the one summer, which kind of yeah, that kind of which was, job, was, right? was like my huge. Which was like one of my best years, because uh, so that year I played Johnny Flynn. We played. He was at Niagara Falls. Um, I had thirty one. He had thirty three. I think he, I think they beat us by a few points, something like that. Um, but he's he's the top point guard in the nation. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So he has a sophomore going head to head with him, two years younger. You know, and then two, one game later I end up tearing my ACL. Wow. But um, so I always would go and play pickup with those guys. You know, try to fit in the best way I can. Um, which I did a pretty good job, obviously, but um, like look wise, I was the same size as <laughs> I was the same size as those guys. Obviously, some of them like faster, but stronger. They wasn't stronger than me at that yeah. point. Because now, you know, you know, sophomore year, I'm six three, one ninety. So, um, as you know, and a lot of those guys are probably like one seventy, yeah. but. Um, I played pickup. I, if I didn't play, I was watching those guys a lot. Um, so this is like maybe 06 to 2009. Um, Mello, Carmelo used to come up before the season and play as well. He was uh, he was just opening up um, the Mellow Center. No, so he would come up more freaking. Yeah. Um, and he was doing like a couple, I think, parks or stuff, stuff like that. Um, Paul, so it's so I'm watching Paul Harris and those guys. Johnny Flynn, Scoop Jardine, Rick Jackson. Um, yeah, Scoop and Rick, yep. Uh, yeah. So that's around that time. Um, even Terrence Roberts. So I'm, I'm watching those guys work out and things like that for the most part. Now, Dewan, did you play high school ball with Dewan? Coleman, Dewan? Dewan, I played um, Dewan Coleman, right? Yeah. Yeah, he was a, he was a freshman. So basically, He's a freshman when I was at JD and freshman when I <laughs> when I was at Syracuse. Right. So, okay. Uh I played here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So so now so now you get you get to campus, you start out for your first practice and stuff, right? You get so what was the feeling like when you take the floor, you know, for your first practice at uh you know Well, so before that <laughs> always came off a little weird to the guys. And I think some of it and that's why I say it's good and bad when you're from a certain city. I think if I was in a different city, I would have seen my teammates more as like someone I needed to be friends with. 
Uh, but because I'm from Syracuse and I already have friends, it was like I didn't I didn't do extra stuff with those guys. Really? So when I when I first got to campus, they probably seen me play basketball for like two or three times because um, they were asking to play pickup. But I, at this time, I'm waking up at six a.m. to do <laughs> this. is The first time I ever do six a.m. So I'm working at six a.m. And now from six a.m. you do six a.m. to seven uh, basketball with Hop with um, Coach Hop. Uh, with Mike Hopkins, and then from seven to nine, do a weight room, and then I have no, not seven to nine, seven to eight, and then I had a class. I had to be at class at eight fifteen. So we got eight fifteen to ten thirty, and then you had a little break, and then I'm like, listen, I ain't playing. I go to sleep. I go to sleep, and you know they start playing basketball pickup at two yeah. p.m. I, I was missing all of those, you yeah. know. So um, they they was obviously they thought I was weird like why? like he don't play he don't like playing basketball like why he not playing yeah <laughs> and it was like I was tired I doing, doing those schedules and stuff like that well um, that obviously didn't affect the team's chemistry because you you were on the winningest teams that they've had there I mean so yeah but do you because, think um, do you think you would do something different now knowing what you know now would you would you build those of course, relationships of I think. I would never – I'm always going to – I always – see, when I was there, I was very non-confrontational. So even as good as I was, if someone was a little bit more aggressive, then I'd let them be. So I, I would never be the one who mess up team chemistry. I'm always going to be – so so if someone's acting erratic, I'm never going to be that guy. I'm always going to be the guy that you know? Yeah. Even no matter what my pedigree was, it's just how – for for whatever reason. So I would have been like, all right, well – you ain't better than me. Let's go. We could fight about it. You know, if I could go back. But because I'm like, I'm not about to argue with five, six plays, and then we mess up five or six times, and then, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, let's, let's you know. So, um, again, I would have probably um, tried to do more with my teammates and not been, let's say, less less uh, closed off. Mm-hmm. Um, but, again, when it came to playing on the basketball court, it was like it was night and day. It wasn't like uh, you would see a problem, you know. And at my freshman year, it was also Andy Routon. So I, I already knew Andy. Right. Uh, he played at JD. I was in a, a eighth grade when I got moved up at the end of the season. I played like three or four games for him already. And he's my he's he's my he's the year of my middle brother. So I already knew Andy since I was in fifth grade. Um, well, Andy, Andy got an so year, it was right? easy transition. So he got he got, uh, he got five years in college, right? Andy. So it made sense. He got he got he tore his ACL. His fifth year was my freshman year, hmm. so that's how it made sense. Yeah, he. But yeah, so when I started playing, obviously you get you get used to it, going back and forth. Everybody's talented in their own right. Everybody feels like they have a certain ego. Or uh, but then you try to figure out, okay, how can we team and. When we start winning, you know what? So what's crazy about so we practice was fun, but you know what's crazy? We actually lost to a Division two team to start our uh, our freshman year out. Who which, who was that? Lemoyne. Lemoyne. Yeah, it was right. So that was that was my. Yeah. Wow. So I remember you know, that. So, so I think the first game we probably played like. So then we start this one playing man to man. Obviously, coach start always start playing man to man. We never play man to man. Anyways, so we play man to man, and they be like, "Damn, they kind of kicking our butt." So then eventually we start pressing. We like, "Man, that's all right." We start coming back because I think at this time they probably killing us, you know. Um, and then we like, "All right, man, we gotta try to win this game." So we start playing zone, <laughs> and they hit the left. We end up tying the game. We end up like coming back, and they end up hitting the three at the buzzer, the one or whatever. Um, but yeah, so, then, so starting the season, of course, <laughs> like most probably was people was thinking, oh yeah, we're not going to be, we're going to be crap, you know? And then maybe three weeks later, we're top 10 team in the nation. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So it happened that fast. We end up, um, starting the season playing like Albany or somebody, we beat those guys and then we end up playing, we went to the, uh, Thanksgiving tournament. We end up being beating North Carolina first. They were a top ten team. We beat them by fifteen, and then we beat the number twelve team. So we are, we we did all, all that in three weeks. 
and we became a top eight team. Crazy. Yeah. So so now you, you get in you get into this and and what was your you know in high school being that you were Mr. Basketball in New York, right? Yeah. So you were treated as the top guy on your high school team a little differently than some of the other guys. Would you agree with that? Because usually um, the top players would... get treated a little bit. The rules are a little bit different for a guy like Pearl Washington than it was for Sonny, say. It wasn't – I didn't hold my – my personality wasn't that. I probably could have. My personality was quiet and, quote-unquote, humble. Yeah. So, like, even if I was getting extra treatment – uh, um, it was it was something that was given to me. It wasn't something that I asked for. Yeah, you know, once once people like, well, nobody you, nobody asked it. for it. I mean, it just it, well, it, it well, just happened. Some people, you know. And the reason I asked you that question was to yeah. set this one up. So, so now you go in, and now you get Coach Beheim, who now is the Hall of Fame coach, and his way of teaching the old school way was the screaming and yelling. I played for one of the greatest yellers ever to coach college basketball, Rolly Massimino. I know. So was that a big culture shock for you by his style, the way he coached um, versus high school? Was, it was. So my coach was more so um, like my high school coach, which is Bob McKinney. Yeah. It, it, he would yell, not necessarily – to me, but because he didn't necessarily have to, he's like, like, like Brandon, pick it up, you know. It was kind of, kind of like that. So I never like had a coach who was like, kind of like, uh, break you down and build you up. Um, and I wasn't that guy. And also, I didn't have the personality to say f you. So like, if I had a person f you, then of course that made me maybe a top ten player. I mean, a top, like, you know, top ten pick. If I'm gonna say f you, versus me that speak that. So all the guys before who have the arguments of like F you, those are the top picks. Like right. you're not who you talking to. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of remain, I guess, respectful in a way in which I just let it happen. And then obviously that builds pressure because now you're like, all right, I'm not trying to and like I don't even know, dang, I didn't even know that was my fault just now. Okay. So then obviously you become a little bit more insecure about your battle. And you, and you go into a shot of like uh, not trying to mess up, but um, I kind of it made me uh, take less risk as a as a like a fresh. I was like, all right, when I'm open, I'm gonna shoot. When I'm on break, I'm gonna finish. I'm not gonna go. No, not to me, random one on ones. You know, maybe in high yeah. school I would just go one on one randomly and just shoot my own shot. But I kind of was like, all right, I'm gonna be more steady. That's what kind of made me. You know, it's interesting. The psyche of college basketball or any sport, you know, it's it's different. It you play at a different level if you have more rope to make a mistake. For example, if you were to take a chance and you made a mistake, you know, you might not have come out of the game where other guys make one mistake and they come right out of the game. You know, yeah, you got more rope. Yeah, you're not looking over your shoulder. You got more leeway. to, to which was kind of so to what you're saying was basically my freshman to my senior year, right? So me and Scoop, how we started was I start the game, I make two mistakes, he go in. He go in the game, he make two mistakes, I'll come right back in the game. So Yeah, right. <laughs> so there you go. That's what I mean. Yeah. You know? So we would like sometimes like smiling at each other on the way out, like it, it's interesting it's an know- interesting thing, Brandon, because if you get minutes you, you get more opportunity to, to work through any problematic things that happen on the floor. When you, when you're, when you're a backup guy and you're spelling, you know, the all American or the superstar, like I played behind Eddie Pinckney. So I know I didn't get the same leeway that Eddie had, you know, or, or Dwayne or something like that. It's just interesting to hear your perspective on it because it, it 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 is more mental, and now the the teams now in the Big East all have psychologists that work with the teams, and you know because that can really you know mess guys up, and and it's it's interesting to to hear your perspective on it because it, it it's a tough thing to deal with back then, you know, in when you played there was the beginning of social media, right? There was some social media, but not like now, 
you know? I mean, so mm-hmm. all of that kind of stuff plays into it at some degree, right? It does. Uh, you, when you grow up, you, you go through your up and downs while you're playing basketball. Yeah. Anyway, it teaches you a lot. Um, whether you win or lose, you know, you you, you win, you 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 get taught a lot about uh, a lot of lessons and those and those losses. So you, it's not like you know, it's just adversity per se, yeah. uh, but you never really threaten your, your basketball career is not really threatened like it could be, especially when you're in high school and middle school, like uh, middle school and playing up. You know, when you get to college, you know, man, we we some people this is all they have. This is that maxes out. You know. Yeah. So now it's more, it's more of a threat on on the next level when things isn't going right. Yeah. You know, transfer. Like now, more than anything, more than anything, one one almost one one not even bad season. Somebody's gonna transfer. Uh-uh, I ain't like it. I'm transferring. Yeah. Where before it was like, man, you 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 just take up the bad season with the year. And, and and then from there transfer and then sit out a year. So you you, you play okay one year, go there, don't play play half, half, half second year, transfer. So somebody had, ain't see you in three years, play basketball. You yeah. know, that's how back then. You know, no one really transferred. It was um, easier to you had to tough it out a little bit. You know, back in the day. Yeah, you not had, not like now. Okay, you can no. just bet. You know, you can just bail it. And we've talked to our guys on the show with, with this type of thing and. You can just bail and go someplace else. It doesn't mean it's going to be better someplace else. You know, some guys, right. some guys go D two, right, and and they get you're yeah. scoring 15, 17, 18 points a game, and figure now I I can go jump to a place like Syracuse, and all of a sudden you're not playing. You're only playing, you know, backup minutes. You know, right. And it all depends, man. It's, and like like you said, it depends on your mentality, yeah. right? Um, it's whatever makes you happy. If basketball is something that brings you joy. Um, I, I say not struggle. It's two. It's two parts. You know, you might go through the struggle for the for the joy. You know, which is like okay, let me struggle my first two years, and then you can. You can it you knows. Know, I like. I, you know, I'm saying for some people, they didn't play the freshman year, they didn't play sophomore, then junior, they play okay, and then senior year they have a crazy season. It's like. Dang, do you still? If you knew you was gonna have a crazy senior, it's crazy year. Your senior yeah. year, go through the struggles your first three years for one great season. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, it's kind of, you gotta have faith and figure. You know, either you're gonna, I mean, at the end of the day, you just have to try your best. Sure. All you can ask for is just try your best, and then you can kind of live. I tried. I worked out as hard as I could. Uh, ran as much. I got in best shape as. I could. Um, it's just listen. If I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. At least I tried it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then that's you know that's kind of like when you transferred. Instead of giving up when you hit the first road, roadblock, yeah. you know. Um, so that's the type of mentality in which a lot of people don't really think about it because a lot of struggles is those their first uh, roadblocks is when they get to college. Mm-hmm. You know, even when they're bad, they still progressed in high school. So it's the first time the anybody's world. really handled any kind of adversity in their life. You know what I mean? When you, you know, when you, the true character of somebody comes out during time, how are you going to handle it? You know, yeah. you, you know, it's right. a, it's an attitude thing that, you know, are you going to tough it out and see, you know, make the best of it and try to get through it? Or are you just going to go, all right, I'm out. You know, it's interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Which is crazy. Cause I mean, you like, Oh, I'm out. And then, and do incredible somewhere else. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so, you know, there's no one way to get at, you know, so I can't really give it, um, you know, sometimes I can't really give advice. I remember someone asked me a question, like, how do you feel about the, the, the transfer portal? I'm like, I understand people want you to toughen it, out, toughen it out. But if you go somewhere else and you can freaking do exactly, if you play exactly how you want to play, happy with it, then boom, they don't go. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. When you, when you got there, right, being a Trish, your uncle playing for the national championship in 87, you have a huge footprint that you put down at Jamesville DeWitt, your player of the year in, in New York State with Lance Stevenson, okay? Did you feel a ton of pressure on you when you went to Syracuse? Um, I, 
I didn't necessarily feel the pressure of just like because of Syracuse. I knew it was the next level, and it's like, you know, if there's like, let's say in your life with basketball, if there's like eight different levels or ten different levels, I knew I was at level eight of like this is almost to the end of like beating the game, you know. So the pressure is like I'm I'm, I'm here, and like I got to make the best of this. So it wasn't really the pressure of like okay from Syracuse and I think that's what made it cool was just being from Syracuse and being able to play in front of like your your home crowd and for until you know forever they're gonna be like hey I used to watch you when I was younger yeah. you know I mean that's the cool part about it so I didn't I didn't necessarily feel the pressure like from being from Syracuse but I knew like I felt the pressure of like how I wanted to play like I was one of those guys, you know? so I felt that pressure. Not like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm from Syracuse and I got to represent Syracuse. Is like, if I'm here, I want to. Well, not not, not not so much that. <laughs> not so much that you have expectations as being the top player in New York State, and that's a big deal. And because most upstate guys don't get a shot at that, that's not something commonly, you know, achieved. Even though. Even though Jamesville DeWitt had some serious ball players, you now are going to you're going to school where your uncle played. You got the same last name. Most of my friends were like, "Oh, it's Tyler's son." I was like, "No, man, it's his nephew." But everybody thought, you know. And now you are starting, right? Yeah. So you were put into that role. So there's a lot, and you're the point guard. Listen, I. When it came to my uncle, I didn't really think about it that much because I, I always figured I was better than my uncle. <laughs> of course. You could say that. Go ahead. He wasn't, he wasn't in the conversation for player of the year. Don't worry. Uh, my uncle was LeBron James. And I'm like, all right, I can't live up. But I knew, like, coming to the situation, I kind of already had a head start on my uncle, you know? So it wasn't necessarily that. But, again, as a – like, what you're saying, okay, as a – in starting – I just always, always been the younger guy, kicking older people butt. So that's just what I was used to. Ever since five years old, when I'm five, my dad's playing with the seven to nine year olds. When I'm seven, I'm playing with the ten to twelve. When I'm ten, I'm playing with the thirteen to fifteen. When I'm thirteen, I'm playing with the seventeen. It's just how 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 I was raised, you know. My I have older brothers, so I always play with the older people. So. I just naturally grew. That's why when I was playing with older people, they didn't they didn't know how old I was. It, it was no real uh, no cutoff. It's like I'm three years younger than these guys, and so I didn't feel that pressure. I just, you know, I mean, it's it's the pressure of the unknown. I mean, that's the only thing, only pressure I've really had. Okay, I was just new. Well, I mean, that's that's pretty good for most people. It's almost smothering, like because you're under you are under a magnifying glass. Everything that you do, and it's 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 tricky. And you're the point guard, so you got leadership. You got to do all that stuff. But as you're saying, listen, you're comfortable on the court, and you're comfortable, obviously, in your own skin. So let's talk about some of the things that you guys were able to accomplish. Right, top ten team freshman year. What are some moments that you remember, or you know, things that you remember about that season, or any of the seasons for that matter? I mean, man, like I said, the, the losing to a Division two team and then us not really knowing exactly how good we were going to be, you know, we were a little bit confused. You know, we going into the season after losing and you know, we had high hopes. You know, we had Wesley Johnson was technically a – he was a transfer, but to our team. Um, we just lost our point guard and Johnny Flynn, who was top 10 pick and, you know. Rookie of the year in the so NBA. We were a little confused. Exactly. So, me and Scoop, we always talk. We like, listen, if we if together we can beat uh, <laughs> Johnny Flynn, then we're gonna be good. You know, if we put both of our staff together and be Johnny Flynn, then okay, that makes sense to us. Um, and then we had a Renze. We had we had leadership. We had Renze was a fifth year guy. We had Wes, who was already twenty two. Like we were old. Let's be honest, we were old. A <laughs> uh, Renze was twenty two to twenty three at the time. Andy was 23. Uh, Wes Johnson was, although he's a sophomore, he was 22. Uh, uh, who else? 
You got uh, Scoop Jardine. He was he was he he he, he was uh, he was also twenty one. Um, Chris, he was twenty. You know, I'm I was a true eighteen year old. I was the only true eighteen year old on that team. You know, <laughs> so we had we had the maturity, and I kind of was around a bunch of veterans, which helped me out. You know, and I was just you know so. Um, I was, you know, I was doing what I can do. Um, I probably would have got, you know, so the only thing I, what I remember is just us surprising people by being as good as we were. Um, and just now just watching, just watching myself on ESPN, like, man, I'm really on ESPN. So I remember that, but I remember obviously the biggie. I remember, I remember everything, but for the most part, it's just being surprised on how good we were that year and what it felt like to be top 10 team. Well, you guys got right up there, and I think AO went down, right? And, and you were you were, so, you were like the sweetheart pick to like the, the team that was going to come in and really upset the apple cart. And then he went down but right before the Final Four, right? Yep. He, no, he, he – he, Big East. Big East, he, he, Big East tournament. He went. Georgetown, um, and we put ourselves in a great position to go into the tournament. Um, but yeah, man, uh, every year I've been there, it was always something went wrong. <laughs> every year, you know, every year was something. Uh, freshman year, Arenze get hurt. Uh, I think so. Sophomore year was it Bernie? Was it the Bernie Fine issue? Um, and then we had guys. Uh, get suspended like it was every year was something where it was like man let this not be and then the, the year my junior year when we were uh we lose we were undefeated um then fab mellow now becomes ineligible which is our like our anchor in the middle yep um and then now first game he literally first game he um and then we play we now he he comes back for a little bit. You know, we, we're still winning, winning, winning. We're going to the Big East. We lose one game, and then he's out for the rest of the tournament. So, um, for me, it was just – I was just amazed. I was always – we weren't top 10 team before I got there. And the four years I was there, we were always – we was always ranked in top 10, which is, like, unheard. You play with a lot of pros. I just – yeah, man, we – um. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, uh, a lot of the guys who did play pro wasn't like bona fide pros to start off. You know what helped out for us is that we had older guys. I was blessed. It hurt my game personally <laughs> that we were so good. <laughs> you know, you know, because I I wasn't confident in just to be like, you know what, I'm just gonna do my thing. It's just we were we were with so many guys who were like playing at a high level, yeah. and then older guys also season that. It's hard for someone. What you just let you let you just let the pieces fall, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you like you said, it was like my let's say my, my my senior year, you got Jeremy Grant, right, who make more money than everybody. He's like the second most paid yep. uh, Syracuse athlete after Melo. Yep. And you wouldn't necessarily be like, oh yeah, him. He's gonna get. He's gonna be the one. He's just the great athlete that a lot of Syracuse, um, Syracuse produce a lot of great athletes. You know, that's kind of like how you know we were recruited. You know, the long, thin athletes who can jump, who can block shots, who can get out and run the floor really well. Not not highly skilled, but really good athletes. Yeah. And Jeremy Grant and Jeremy Grant is like it's incredible. So. He couldn't get off the bench, right? My our senior year, um, James Sutherland, he gets suspended, academic suspension. Jeremy Grant plays, and now he's on the draft boards. <laughs> it's like it, it, you know, you can't make this yeah. up, you know. And again, you got even then, you got right Christmas, right? He's he's at the time he he's he's in the doghouse. Every he, he starts the game, but he doesn't he plays. He'll 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 play the first three again. He played the first three minutes. Have about one or two fouls, and by the end of the game, he played five minutes the whole game. It's like there's no point of even starting. Yeah. You know, and then one year later, he's he's 19 points a game. 
<laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's you know so it's, it's incredible you know CJ Fair you know he he played a lot of reserve minutes and then you know those guys come into their own um so we we was blessed enough to have a great team that everyone ended up getting better over time and once they had their opportunity the reason why we're good is because when guys had their opportunity they were waiting on the you know it's like all right you got your opportunity Okay, you're not playing bad. You playing bad today? All right, my turn. Yeah, it's just next man <laughs> up, right? Exactly. So it, it was never really where it was two. It was the third, the starting guy and the backup guy. Normally, two guys messing up. It was one or the other. It's like all right, you you had a bad game today, but your backup did well. All right, now your backup is playing more minutes than you. You know, mm-hmm. okay, until he messes up, then you get. Your, that's kind of like how Bayon at one point. Well, you got that much. You got that much talent. Go ahead, Chuck. Yeah. Talk to us about your run uh, to the Final Four in in uh, in 2013. Talk about that. How you guys got there, and um... man, it was it was incredible, man. I think uh, going into that year, it was our least talented team. Yeah. Um, we lost a lot of guys my junior year, and that's like a. You know, we we only had three 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 losses, which probably could have been two, but um, and we lost a lot. You know, we lost. There's no, there's no Scoop Jardine. There's no uh, Rick Jackson. There's no uh, Chris Joseph. There's no. That's all. There's no Deion Waiters. There's nobody there. So now, um, you got somebody who you think about redshirting, which is Michael Carter Williams. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty you good player. Thing about rest- Another rookie of the year in the NBA. NBA. Exactly. And that was our junior year, man. We had so many players our junior year. It was incredible. Um, so he's just battling. And he was one of those guys who, who was fighting, 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 fighting. Right? He started getting a little bit stronger. Um, he was one of those guys who would coach talk too much. He's respectful. But then he's like, all right, well, F you. Him and Hopkins was like, like, best friends you know they were like brothers it's like you know because they were just so they were going back and forth so much you know when i wanted to quit and, and times where he thought it was unfair they were playing and he just kept fighting like he would have a bad day and sometimes they had to send him home because might go crazy you know it was one of those times it's like man listen what was like what's the point of me even playing i'm never gonna play so but he kept and i could see it over the summer um I can get better and stronger, and just the the way he was playing. Um, that I knew uh, it was like it was me and him. I was comfortable that as guards we were going pretty well. So, but again, so I'm sorry. So, so when you get what about the Big East tournament on your way to the Final Four? What? So, 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 so during that, so I'm gonna get to it. So during the season, it was it was a. Uh, Again, we we started out pretty good. We started about thirteen and zero. Uh, we just have a great regular season, how we would normally do. Um, in the middle of that Big East, I end up hurting my back. So when we start playing, I wasn't doing as much. I went from averaging fifteen point five. By the end of the season, I went down all the way down to thirteen. I lost like two points, which is hard to do. Lose two points in the middle of a season on your average when you already played 16 games so we went through we were playing up and down we went through a slump right before the big east tournament we lost four out of five games i think like yeah we had lost to like uh georgetown kicked our butt <laughs> louisville uh villanova we were just losing losing so going into the big east tournament we were thinking we couldn't even make the t- make the tournament yeah. the ncaa tournament you know because now we probably if we lost four out of five, we probably already had lost five games. Now we lost like nine games. We were probably like the eighth team, eighth team or whatever in that time. In that time. So going into the tournament, we were like, and listen, we, we, we can't do what we normally did in my past four years, past three years. We already had to buy the first two games, the first two games. So we will play on Thursday. And all we got to do is play two more games to win the championship. You know, because we wasn't, we didn't care about the Big East tournament. We got there, you know, people shopping. Nobody not worried about the Big East tournament. This year, <laughs> we had to actually focus because we were playing on, I believe, the second day. We had one bye, but we were playing on the second day. 
and we had like a team meeting. It was me and um, James Sutherland, Michael Carter Williams as well. He was a, a big vocal leader for us. And we just like, yo, if we're going to do this, we're going to have to do it with our defense. And we locked in. And that's how we were able to kind of get to the Final Four. Because for those four games, we were the best that we can be. Even if our offense wasn't clicking, yeah. defensively, we was holding people down to, I think, about 32%, 33% shooting or something like that. It was crazy what we were doing. Yeah, yeah that was just nobody, right? You held, you held teams in the 40s, right? I think 30s. Yeah. I, think, I swear it was 30s. Yeah. Um, and again, yeah. And <laughs> it was, which was incredible yeah, at the is. time. You know? Because no matter what, even if our offense, if we could miss, 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 and we were so much, we were such a great team at the time. We just picked, no matter if you missed, you made a turnover. We were like, yo, we, this is good. We never looked at each other like, what the heck are you doing? We knew that every possession, anybody did something, they're doing the best that they can do and that we're going to have their back. Yeah. And that's how we were. That's like, what it's all about. Chipped off one, two, right, three wins. If one person got hot, you will pass it to him till he missed. You know, we were happy for each other, no matter who yeah. did it. So obviously we ran into Louisville, um, and we <laughs> and we kind of ran out of gas, yeah. kind of. Or they, they kicked our, I mean, realistically, they kicked our butts. They went in in about eight minutes. They went on like a they they changed the game from we they were down like fifteen points. We were up fifteen with like four, three like maybe three minutes to go in the first half. We went to the locker room maybe up like thirteen. Yeah. By the thirteen minutes on the second court in the second half, we were down. 15. Oh, man. <laughs> man, it like it was just boom, 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 boom. It was like it was just chipping away and just knocking us out. Um, but yeah, that that led to the same focus that we had because now we knew, okay, we are the team that we thought we were. You know? So like we didn't care who we played. Oh my like, yo, if they've never seen us known, they cannot beat us. Yeah. Who, who you know, did you guys so, play to get into the Final Four? Who was the uh, Elite Eight? Our, our first, um, I believe, like in general, I, I'm going to try to remember. I think it was Montana that we beat, and then we beat Cal again to uh, to go to the Sweet 16. And then we played Indiana. We beat Sweet 16, and then we beat Marquette, oh, Marquette to get to the Final, get to the four. final four. Wow. Okay, so so that makes sense, right for yep, and then and then final four would be Michigan, and then it would have been obviously Louisville who who ended up yeah. winning. That was they had a squad, man. That yeah. was Rick uh, Patino's second chip too. That was the uh, that was his. He won yeah, one with Kentucky, the first one, and then the second one he won uh, with Louisville. And we were back and forth like us those two teams that year. We were like this, you yeah. Know? It was kind of like. They beat us. They we beat them. They were number yeah. one, right? Yeah. We beat them at their place. We closed. Yeah, we beat them. I forget where, what place it was. The yeah, 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 yeah. But anyways, we beat them. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we beat them, and we were happy, right? Cool. We we we, we did the uh, polls came out. We were number one. Two days later, we lose. <laughs> yeah. it, that's lose how, it, that's how it goes sometimes, though, man. It's like, you know, who's the better team on that particular day? You know, it's, uh, it, that's it's the not police. easy. You know, playing, playing at that level, it's, cra- it's crazy. But that, yeah, listen, like I said, we then you wound up, you, di- you didn't get drafted. Did that surprise you at all? Were you kind of shocked that you didn't get drafted? Uh, I knew that it was going to be difficult for me to get drafted, yeah. And um, and it's just because I thought I didn't do enough, and my back hurting me kind of screwed me. So I think the projection I had from like to say the first fifteen games, I caught like I would have instead of being third team, I think I was or something in the Big East. I definitely would have been close to like first, second team because at the time I'm leading the team in right. points. I'm leading the team in points. We're playing well. I'm the leader, and people see me as that. You know, and just the second half of the season, I couldn't move, you know. And so I knew I had a hard time. I, I couldn't, my back was so messed up that at the end of at the last game, so it was, um, 
after the final four, I didn't go to Portsmouth. I was supposed to go to Portsmouth. I couldn't go. I'm like, I can't. can't move. <laughs> so I, I didn't, I didn't work out. I missed, so I, I didn't work out all of April at all because my back, like, I need the only thing that could have helped it, I guess, was time. Yeah. So then I started working out in May. And then that's when I started doing my pre draft stuff in May. You know, so yeah, it was, it was a little bit difficult for me to actually put myself in the best position, even when I'm doing workouts with the team. Right. It's like, um, I'm, I'm I'm doing okay, but I'm like working my way back into shape, into the player athletically that I want to be, and things like that. Mm-hmm. So it was it was a little bit difficult. So, so to to wrap this thing up a little bit, we got we're running up against it a little bit. So you, one thing mm-hmm. I I did want to ask you because in I think it was in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. You played on that that, that TBT uh, Bayheim's Army team, right? What was yeah. that like? Because that was like you, you had guys that played before you, guys that played after you. It was like a whole. How did that team get put together? First of all, and I mean that's that was an incredible experience. I played, I believe, four of the years. I think seventeen, eighteen, uh, twenty, twenty out night. Uh, 19, I didn't play. 20, I played Kobe year. But that team is uh, always it was competitive in that tournament. By the way, it was crazy. exactly, and uh, we were always ranked first or second. Is because if you look at it, you have one guy who started playing college in 02, and then you had one guy who finished playing in 17. So you had like 15 years yeah. of college. That's pretty good. Because <laughs> he played, I think, one of that that year. Um. So it was awesome to play. It was a great experience. Um, a lot of the guys I actually from there too, so I watched them. They knew of me, or heard about me. You know, some of them when I was high school and things like that. Um, the one thing about Syracuse is everybody kind of know each other. Everyone, everyone see each yeah. other is always love. Um, and who put it together? Um, I think um, Kevin Belby put it together. Who was a team manager when I was there? Okay. So he was, he was the same year as me. He was team manager. Um, so once the TBT thing became a thing, uh, he was just trying to round guys up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he did it pretty good. Some, some guys didn't want to play. Some guys did want to play. Um, so we were just trying to find a great mix of young and old, um, to see if we could, you know, cause we knew about nostalgic, um, memories that could be created with the TBT. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I, I've always I've always watched those guys because of my affiliation. I, I almost went to Syracuse myself and uh, wound up going to Nova. But, um, you know, I like watching those things for, to, just to see those guys play because they're probably one of the most entertaining teams in the whole thing. Being that the team was named after him, was Coach involved at all with that team? Coach B? He wasn't. He wasn't. He was just uh, – he came to the games and stuff. Yeah, okay. But he – he didn't do much. Um, Ryan Blackwell, who also uh, played at Syracuse, was coach when I was coaching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he coached locally at the high school at Liverpool. Yep. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe he called coach. Um, you know, actually, coach would give us like tips and stuff. I guess he would relate information <laughs> through other people. Oh, you know, that's stuff like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once a coach, always a coach, right? Oh. Yeah. So he would, you know, like. Coach said this, or coach said the game, you know, coach, you know, which was awesome because they, 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 they love it too, you know, even the players, like they love more players would come and watch, and it's like it's something they cheering, and I'm sure they don't even know none of the guys, <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's like you know they cheering like yo, this is our team we represent for Syracuse, so I think that's awesome, and I think we got the reason why we're so awesome in TV is that we got one. Of yeah, so fans would travel, well, and even they, to, this day, to this day, they always travel. The Syracuse fans go everywhere. It's unbelievable. You yeah, know? yeah, incredible. Even like so, when I'm in Dubai and I had games in like Abu Dhabi as well, um, I'm S. I'm like, what the? I'm like, like, wait, is that Syracuse or a different school? Yeah. You know, and some like, man, I grew up in Syracuse. I'm from Syracuse. I'm a huge fan. He was playing up here, and I'm coming to watch. I'm like, wow, you know, that's incredible. Yeah. Italy, all those places. So, I mean, basketball is a—you think it's a small sport, 
like when you start playing, but it, it's so small. <laughs> it's so small the connections, you know yeah. what I mean? Because everyone knows somebody that knows somebody, oh. and you guys all seem like to be related. Yep. And that's how we put some of this together, to be honest with you, because the people we know and people we met through the through the basketball world. Well, well, listen, Brad, mm-hmm. it was great talking to you. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today on the Big East Rewind. We really appreciate you coming out and uh, give my best to everybody, your uncle, when you see him and, and everybody else in the Trish family. Yeah, do it up, man. Get back on the court. I know you're nursing an injury. I know you're nursing an injury now, right? So we got to um, get you back healthy and get you back on the court, man. Yeah, thank you, man. Thanks for having me. I had fun with you Absolutely. guys. So anytime. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah. You've been listening to the Big East Rewind with Chuck Everson and Sonny Sparrow. The Big East Rewind is produced and directed by Nick Chico Chorus and Daryl Gurney and our friends at Boundless Ventures. And you can check us out on all things social media by putting Big East Rewind in the search bar. And we ask you to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Thanks a lot. Have a great night, everyone. Bye-bye.